Hey, Mike Moo here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the Ring Car Cam. I got it after seeing it at CES, and you can actually pre order this right now. I think it's in stock in May. If you are interested in getting this, please check out my link down below. I suggest that you order it now. This is a car cam that is a little bit different from most other car cams in the fact that one, it integrates with Ring. If you are a Ring fan, or you already use the Ring doorbell and Ring cameras and stuff in your ecosystem, I think this is a no-brainer because obviously you've already got over the fact that Ring, there's certain privacy issues with Ring with regards to the fact that there have been many cases where the police have been able to subpoena footage from Ring even without your consent. If you can get over that, then this could very well be one of the best dash cams available that you can connect live, almost seamlessly live, and get live notifications from your car as long as you have cellular signals. Now, if that interests you, this is going to be $250. And in order to get the live, you actually have to subscribe to their car cam plan. So it's called the Protect Go. Now, my trial ends soon. I am actually going to go ahead and subscribe to it and pretty much put my money where my mouth is. I think this is better for me than the one that, that the engineers that used to make the Owl Cam came up to the Amazon Ring team and helped them to produce this over here. And it's better because I have much better reception from the Ring ecosystem than I did with the Owl Cam. Now, I realize that, yes, this could have been resolved if Alcam had a better BNO or data plan subscription available that allows me to choose something that's a little bit more, uh, let's say, cellular friendly in my neighborhood. I'm on T-Mobile here and the reception's really not great. Whatever they're using here, it's actually getting through. That's the number one reason why this works out a lot better. It has a lot of the features that are available on Alcam on the Ring Cam for a cheaper monthly subscription fee. What do you get with this, all right, that sets it apart? First is two, it's two cameras, one facing out, one facing in. The one facing in is actually super wide. And that's one thing that sets it apart from the owl cam is how wide the field of view is. It captures everything pretty much from the windshield back to the rest of the car in terms of field of view. That's super, super wide. Whereas the owl cam was a little bit more focused on basically the people sitting in the front seat. And this could be good or bad for various reasons. One, it's good is because it, so if someone shatters, comes by and shatters your front side windows, the ring camera is much more likely going to be able to capture that than the owl cam is going to do. You get a free trial for months. So you get to try out all the premium features to figure out whether or not you want to keep it. And what you get is on-the-go connectivity over LTE, always connected. Right now, our Palisade is all the way in San Bruno. I can click on, just open up my app, and I can just check on a car anytime that I want to. Or if something happens out there, I'll get a notification, and I'll be able to see what's going on. I'm going to keep in mind out there, the reception's not great either. But even then, when it gets gl glimpses of reception, this is the car right now. This is all the way out. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see that. But this is the car right now. This is the interior, and I could switch out to the exterior. This is what the exterior looks like. You can see that there's cars parked over there. And notice that you will not be able to see much of the sides. You can't really see the sides, but it does capture. See right there, there was a car that was pulling through. And I'm seeing that live right now, and this is 50 miles away. I have never been able to do this as seamlessly on here, except through the Owl Cam, than through this Ring system. That's important to you. This is the best one available right now for the price. You get live view and two-way talk over LTE. I can talk to someone inside the vehicle from any when the car is parked away from home. I think when it's home, it tries to connect via Wi-Fi. I think that's the case. But I don't have Wi-Fi signal way the heck out there anyway. I can actually talk live. I can talk live to whoever's driving. I can check in on whoever's driving just in case I need to ask them something. And that inherently turns out to be a lot safer than trying to call them on the phone because you don't have to do anything. It's just a straight up speaker phone. You have the capability for cloud highlights for up to 180 days. Live footage and the first 20 seconds of motion detection videos are stored in the cloud for 180 days for you to review. 
you have a really long time to review some of this. Notice, this is the first 20 seconds. If you want to see more than that, you actually have to go into the app, and this is somewhat annoying, but I understand. You got to go into the app, pull up what's going on. Well, the first 20 seconds, basically the first 20 seconds of where motion de detection is going to be on here, and it's going to stay in the cloud. They're going to upload the first 20 seconds. But if I want to see something like, let's say in this clip, last more than 20 seconds. It's lasting at least a couple of minutes in terms of the motion. If I want to see the last 20 seconds or somewhere in the middle or somewhere past the 20 seconds, I have to go here. And then if I want to download, you want to view this video in full resolution, it says that down here, I have to click on download. Now, what it will then say is, look, your video is too long to download. All right. You will download the video from wherever that section that I moved up to from that time to this certain time. And it is only in 20 second increments. And then I got to click download. And what happens is the ring camera will then upload those 20 seconds that you selected to the cloud and then process it. And then only then after it processes it, then can you download it. This is significantly different from other dash cams where you you can just download directly, for instance, or you take out the micro SD card. No, in this case, they only want you to review the footage and then pull select a 20 second section to download in high quality. If you want to download multiple clips, unfortunately, this is not the dash cam for you. It's just a bit of a pain. I got to go through each one, get up to that 20 second mark and then download. If you want to use this documenting trip, I'd probably say, no, that's not really great, except for one other exception. This is where they really, I guess they really put this part home. In the owl cam, what happens is I can just say, okay, presto. All right. I say that and it jumps back like a minute or before that, and then starts recording for a couple of minutes. I forget how long, but it records for a couple of minutes. Here, what you say is Alexa record. All right. And what that does is it does a cloud highlights for a traffic stop and up to five minutes of the event will be uploaded to the cloud highlights that you can then go in on your ring app or go in on on the website and then you can download or review that that's up to five minutes i don't know why it says up to five minutes but maybe because then you could just ask the dash cam to stop recording now here's one other thing with this though is that i know for a fact that as i'm driving along my wife and I are talking, or maybe the radio's on or something, it will just say, hey, we're recording a traffic stop now. And I definitely did not ask it to. And yeah, I don't know. That seems just a little bit creepy, but it just could be that it just picked up some sort of sound and didn't interpret it correctly. It could be that. But then you should know that it will then start recording, which is just a little bit creepy. Okay. All right. The other thing you get is rich notification, know what's happening when it happens without needing an open app. And that basically means it just sends me like a notification here in the island bar on the top or however you set your notifications on your phone. That's useful. Okay. If you're not expecting anybody to be driving the car and suddenly text someone in there, it's going to let you know. And that's useful for just about anybody, right? You get map location over LTE. That's great. You know where your car is at all times from your Ring app. I really have this built into the Hyundai app, but with the Ring app, I think it updates it more frequently. Whereas with the Hyundai, you have to request it and it takes up to a minute or two. This is much faster response time. That's pretty simple to be able to, to do that and know where your car is basically wherever it has reception. And then finally you get to download and share videos from the device and video highlights from the cloud. I will show you some examples of that as I talk more about the ring cam. Now, the plan details, you can go ahead and check this out, is basically what I showed. And of course, the pricing could be subject to change at any time. And it is $6 per month, all right, or $72 a year. You get a $12 discount if you pay for, this, for the whole year upfront. And that's $60. Now you compare this with the Owl Cam. Now just pull up the Owl Cam site and you'll see uh, what the pricing is. And they've been trying to be a little bit more competitive. They've heard some of us out and they started to give a uh, different pricing on it. Now you can get the Owl Cam version 5, $499, which is a little bit cheaper than what the Ring Cam is going for right now. And the monthly connect plan though is $20. 
right? Or the annual connect plan is $180. If reoccurring fees really start to get annoying, you got your streaming fees, you got your cable, you got your cable, you got your internet, all this stuff fees. You want to try to minimize the fees. And that's definitely something I'm down for. $60, it seems to me to be much more reasonable than $180. Okay. With a caveat, of course, that you are pretty much limited by the whole 20 second thing. Okay. And then I'm sure that there's a data cap plan. I forgot. I read somewhere in there that they were thinking that the most you're going to use is four gigabytes of cloud data. And I'll go over that. I haven't met that limitation. That didn't bother me. And the fact that the LTE is cheap anyway, I feel like it's worthwhile. Because I don't really need to check in on the car that often. It's just every once in a while. And it's really good to know. And it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind. Somewhere in here, I believe, and if I find it, I'll be sure to put it up on a screen where it says that they are limiting the data to X gigabytes okay, per month just to make sure that there's not some sort of abuse going on. And I'm not sure what kind of abuse you're Oh, here we go. Service includes two gigabytes of LTE data per month. Extra data charges may apply. LTE data is provided by a third-party carrier. Carrier uptime technology and speeds will vary. They're not really sharing what it is that they're using. My guess is that they're using AT&T. That's my guess. Because T-Mobile, I have practically nothing. All right. And with Alcam, I also have practically nothing. I think at and is it, but it could be someone else. I'm really not sure. All right. If you were interested in getting this versus the Alcam, I definitely did some videos on the Alcam Classic 5, which is the current version. They call it Classic 5, but there is no newer Alcam than this one. I did a video about it. Ultimately, I returned it only because I did not like the subscription fees that I was getting, okay, for the quality of service that I was getting, mostly because I didn't have reception. Now, if money were not a concern, I think that I would get the Alcam. I think the Alcam overall is, is better in certain circumstances. I'm less limited by the, by the 20 second rule. Okay. You have a 20 second rule with the ring dash cam. With Alcam, I don't. I never felt like I didn't, I couldn't get enough of the data. All right. And with the Alcam, I can actually connect it via Wi-Fi to download footage if I needed to. That's not something I do very often. And the main reason why I don't do that is I already have other dash cams already connected. I have the U1000 in there. I got the Black View. Okay, both are cloud capable. Okay. And U1000, uh, actually, both of them have their separate whole LTE thing. But the Ring ecosystem is just much smoother. It really is. And Alcam was not bad when I have reception too. It's just faster, okay? I don't have to wait a few seconds to connect. It's less kludgy. This, the whole system's a lot more integrated with the Ring ecosystem. And to a fair extent, the Alcam next. It's just a lot less kludgy. That's why I didn't stick with Alcam. You can go look at that video. It's on my channel. And yeah, that is basically why I'm keeping this. It does what it says it's going to do. Now, I think there were some people who were wondering whether or not it's going to have identify key motion events in, outside the vehicle. It's not intended to detect all motion air device. I will say that it detects pretty well outdoors with light and contrast when people are walking by. Unfortunately, that also means that out there in the front where we park our car with the winds blowing and the branches moving around the trees, it keeps setting it off. Okay, I keep getting notices like that. And that's just, that's something that's just going to be something you're going to have to connect with any dash cam, not anything different. It's just that if that happens, you're just going to get a lot of notices. One big con, I will have to say, and this is why the Alcam is better. And this is something that the Ring system could update via firmware over time. And that is, is that for whatever reason, I keep getting the notice that the Ring cam is going to shut down because it needs to save the battery. Okay. And I have it set on the highest availability setting. There are a couple of settings on there in the app that you can choose from. And in the app, you can say how conservative you want with the rest of the remaining battery. I'll even give you some examples. Like if you're in a newer car and you have a newer battery, we're going to shut down the ring camera less. We have a new car. It has an AGM battery. And I realize there is some stuff straining in there. But sometimes I look at it. And I'm thinking, I just drove the car. I don't know why you're shutting down already quickly. That's a negative. Okay, If you expect it to protect your car and it just shuts down, 
just because it's protecting your battery and doesn't give you a choice, I think that's a big con. Okay. And my other dash cams are still running, but they have external battery packs. But I cannot run the Ring car cam with an external battery pack that is sanctioned by Amazon or that won't void the warranty or something like that. Maybe that's something that someone should create third party for the Ring cam. And yeah, that, that is a big con. Note that if you're going to leave your car parked out somewhere, it's really your battery voltage is going to be a little bit less. And because of that, it's going to shut down the Ring car cam and let you know, okay, we're not monitoring anymore. That's it. We're shutting down. All right. I think it's too aggressive with a shutdown. And I think that you will find that a lot of people have said the same thing. This is not just someone just getting annoyed with it. This, I've truly seen this. I've driven out my car and 10, 15 minutes later, it says, look, we got to shut down. Okay. It'd be nice, Ring Team, if you can program something in there where we can have more control about when you shut down. This way, we can decide for ourselves whether or not we want to risk it and get a jump start or just make sure that the car is protected over the weekend, wherever I might be, or just park there on a street. Because then this way, I, this way it does its job. That's what it comes down to. All right, here's where they talk about it. It says, will the car cam deplete my car battery? As a power management system, which again, it sucks, that will turn the device off in advance of depleting the car's battery. If a low battery level is detected in the car's part, the, cam, the car cam will shut itself off and receive notification in the Ring app. Car cam will power back once your vehicle turns on again, and its battery is sufficiently charged. When the vehicle is parked, oh, by the way, there is no battery at all in the ring car cam, as far as I can tell. Okay, It has to run off your OBD port. All right. When a vehicle is parked, ring car cam goes low power mode to draw even less power from your battery between uses. Although the device will monitor the car's battery level and shut down when needed to help preserve your battery life, you should make sure your battery is healthy and not pass the service life to control how long the car cam stays active between drives. You can change the vehicle battery usage setting in the app. This setting allows you to determine how soon car cam shuts off based on your driving behavior, battery age, and environment. Yeah, they have to tweak that, that, that algorithm. It's not working out. All right, at least let us put in some sort of voltage or something. Okay, that's the deal with the car cam. It's super easy to install. It fits in most cars. You can check my link down below for, for a look at the compatibility. It offers a lot of convenience features that I loved about the Owl Cam, but without paying the higher price and with getting better reception and just using the Ring app and having being very responsive with the major negatives, meaning that it's not good for long term recording. It records, but then now if you want to download, it's only in 20, 20 second segments. It's really about capturing those moments that you really need to have, like in an accident, a car break in or police pulling you over and you want to have a documentation for this when you go to court or for any reason whatsoever, this is something that is worthwhile. To, it's almost like a cheap insurance to back up your insurance and to protect everyone involved. And yeah, that is why I'm keeping it. And as of today, I'm going to subscribe to the Ring Dash Cam Go. All right. Now, I'm going to see if I can answer a few frequently asked questions on here. Oh my God, there's 888 more. Let's see. Yeah, you're going to want to pre order this as soon as possible. Looks like they're back ordered all the way through May. And let's see. What do I, does it have any local disk storage and how many hours of driving can record? If you're okay, so 128 gigabytes of local storage, which is not as long as you think because it's recording two HD signals front and back. The quality of the recording is okay. It's just okay. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. It's HD, okay, high definition. I wouldn't call it really full HD, but that has a lot to do with a lot of the environments that I'm reviewing the footage from. It's dark, obviously. It's got to up the gain on the camera sensor. That introduces a lot of digital noise. You lose the resolution. Really, it's full HD in the best case scenario, and really just a potato in a really bad low lighting situation. Some people are not overly impressed. Maybe they haven't seen what's out there. They don't know that this is decent for the price. Okay. Yeah. This is what you will see a lot more of. And I'm banking on the fact that they're going to have enough complaints about this, that Ring will update their algorithm better, that we can choose not to conserve as much of my vehicle's battery. I think they, they're just really conservative about this as they don't want people stranded. I understand. But it is way too conservative. And yes, I will agree. 
there are many cases where this is what happens, but this is not just this dash cam that has that problem. If you're going to want to capture just license plates, note that it's tough for just about every dash cam out there. It really is very difficult to capture with camera sensors the way they are right now in dash cams. Someone else said that it is due to the vehicle limitations of the OBD2 power port and not issues of the King ring camera themselves. Either way, they got to solve that because it's not working out right. I think what they need to do is provide a an ability or a third party ability to be able to provide supplementary power to the ring car cam that is not exclusively on the OBD2 port. I think I think that's the best way to solve it. And just to be clear, some of these people are complaining about how unclear the footage is. And I think what happens is when you're looking at it in the app and you're reviewing the footage, what you're seeing is like a low resolution version, or I like to call an LRV, a low resolution version of it. And when you want to have the higher quality one, you need to be sure that you do it soon before your footage runs out and you select where it is and it says view this video in full resolution you're going to want to do that for that 20 second segment the key 20 second segment that you want to be able to and download and share whichever you're going to want to do that before the internal 128 gigabyte buffer runs out okay i'll give you an example how that could really mess certain things up if something happened to your car you do not find out about it your 128 gigabytes gets completely filled with driving scenarios where it was recording anyway and maybe the wind was blowing and the leaves were setting off all the sensors and it's recording all that stuff ring is not going to be able to retrieve a higher quality video for you to download if it ran out of space it will upload the low resolution version the first first 20 seconds at least up to the cloud okay but if you want to get the higher res version and download that and it already ran out okay and not only did it run out but you had really poor reception wherever you're at you're not going to be able to get that footage in any high resolution detail and then you're going to come back in here and complain and you're going to show that your footage looks like a potato because it will look like a potato because it was overwritten already and they only uploaded the low resolution version onto the cloud that you can review it on the thing, on, on the app and also the website. And you're not going to be able to make out any license plates. The person's face is going to be pretty darn obscure and you're not going to be able to see it very well. And I, I think that's where, where a lot of this fails when you really need to get that license plate or get a better look at that person that might have done something to your car. Okay, that's where it's at. All right, I, I'm going to share some footage and you can go ahead and look at it. You can review it yourself and you can see what kind of stuff that you're getting. And note that inside after dark, like when the in, inside facing camera after dark is recording, it's black and white because it's going to pick up the video. Better. And also because you have these infrared lights inside that blast it, it's invisible to our eye. The blast it's that it will have an actual picture to show, but it doesn't blast it outside and it can't because it's going to reflect and it's not going to look great your external view is not going to be necessarily great if it's super dark. If it's in the middle of the night, there's mu not much moonlight, it's in cloudy conditions, someone walks in front of your car and there's no other lights around, you're not going to see anything, you're going to get to notice about anything either. Not until they come in within range of the 180 degree view and the, the infrared light blasts them with the light, can you see that something's going on? Oh, one other thing. I don't think that this is a good solution for uh, stopping, preventing someone from stealing your catalytic converter. There, I said it. If you thought this was going to do it, it's not. If you see these guys work, it takes them 60 seconds. And that's how fast that they are at stealing catalytic converters. Keep that in mind. You can put a motion detector, motion detection thing on your car. I'll have a link down below. Maybe I'll talk more about that. And that will only protect if, it's, if you're within like a quarter mile range. You get an alert that your car has movement, all right? You'll get it on your app and you'll get a voice thing. That's how I set it up. And I, it's called Yo Ink. And I don't know what you can do in those 60 seconds other than try to scare them away. But even then, is it worth dying over if some of these guys are packing guns with them now because they're, they're worried about uh, getting attacked while they're stealing your catalytic converter? And they should be. It's not going to help you with that.
I'm just letting you know straight up that you might get an alert that there's something going on, but if, if you need to confirm it within 60 seconds, they're already gone. Okay, on to the footage, and yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if you got it, if you tried it out, didn't work for you. There are definitely some issues to get around, and let me know if you're going to pre-order it. And if you do, please use my link. I am an Amazon affiliate, and it would really help me out in my channel since that I can make more videos like this for everyone. Okay. Thanks for watching. Wow. Wow. Shit. Lady. Wow. Wow. Lady. lady. Oh. Uh -huh.